some other uh, issues that I have talked about even before um, <coughs> we get to my uh, report. Um, as the mayor has said, um, the administration and the leadership has to do a better job of cost containment. Um, this all came about because cost containment prior to all everything that happened uh, was not looked upon. All right. Um, and as far as um, um, the recall, the, the recall was from the residents of the city of East Cleveland. Um, I have no uh, problem with um, uh, political activity that is coming from the city residents. That is their um, right. And as far as the other um, recall, um, that um, petition um, garnered no cost because it did not go through. The only one that got on the cost was from the <coughs> first one, which was the counselor, which already took place. And then the, um, the election took place, just took place on December the 8th. Um, that um, was something that was orchestrated by the residents of that ward, which was Ward 3. Um, which fell short of 24 um, votes. Um, now, getting to the council. The council had already retained uh, King and Buckley on pro bono, which was to look for options and ways to deal with uh, city, saving the city and uh, not having the city uh, do a merger. Uh, as I don't know if, it, if everybody knows, but that part of the petitions that were um, picked up by, initiated by the mayor, is now in court down at the Sheriff's Department. Um, the other part that the King and Buckley is taking on is because the uh, mayor's chief of staff felt that the council was not doing its job, which the council is doing its job, and it is doing due diligence. And in that uh, area, um, we talked to the uh, law director, which is Ms. Hemmings, in a council meeting, and she expressed to us that she could not uh, represent us because it was a conflict of interest. And she also <coughs> said she advised us to seek outside representation. Therefore, we did not have to go looking for anybody because we already had Buckley and King, and on the recommendation of the um, law director, we uh, looked at Buckley and King, and he said, they said, that in our uh, packet, we could have them to do that work also. <coughs> so it's not like we went out looking for anybody or was trying to deal with something that um, could have been avoidable, but it could have been had Mr. Smedley, the chief of staff, had not sued the council. <laughs> and we had to seek representation. So, you know, it gets to the point where you're talking about saving money, but you're also talking about suing the council and the council has to do what it needs to do, and that is protect itself. And also, we went to, we followed protocol. We went to 
to the law director first. And in all of this mess, or he's suing us, we suing them, we doing this, we doing that, we found out that the um, law director also was uh, dealing with the petitions and amending the petitions and not dealing with the petitions and all of that. So basically, um, Madam Chair, we have a lot of political involvement here mm -hmm. that really should not have taken place. It was avoidable had the chief of staff not been so aggressive and come after us with a, a suit. So now we're talking about money and another um, point is that when the law directors advise us to seek outside um, representation, she said also, I will talk to Jack about setting aside some money. Now, this is not something that I'm coming up with just saying it because, you know, to do things, I don't do that. I either tell you the truth or I don't tell you nothing. All of this is on tape. Because all of my uh, counsel is taped. And for whatever reason that somebody has a reason to deny what was said, it's on tape. Uh, also, we as counsel tomorrow will be having an executive committee meeting, if I'm not mistaken, to deal with the appropriation and the amendment. We have scheduled that, and that will take place before the council. Uh, Jack, the uh, law, I mean the uh, finance director, is supposed to be <coughs> present, and uh, so that every one of the council can hear what the appropriations are, the amended appropriations, because they didn't get a chance to see uh, those. Uh, so we will be talking about that, and I'm sure um, that it will not be a problem unless something else comes up. Um, and that's just about all I got to report. That was a mouthful, but <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I go back to where I come from, and that is to report the exact truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, so help me God. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks. <laughs> Any questions for the councilwoman? Um, I don't have any old business. The new business actually was addressed by Tish in the report of the financial supervisor. Um, anything else for the good of the order before we get on to setting a meeting date and the public? Yeah, well, I'll just say sure. that in the 2016 temporary appropriation, yes. the uh, general fund looks really appropriate. It gives you an annual uh, budget of approximately ten million dollars. Okay, which is probably right on the <coughs> thing. That's, that, that's where I have to keep in my mind saying that's where the expenditures have to be in order to make it. So if this is just a quarterly appropriation like most cities, then uh, at least the budget process starts with the workable budget. The only other thing that I would say and I forgot to ask this um, to Tish earlier, just an observation, not really a question, but it appears to me that um, past due accounts payable on the aging report is, is sitting right around the same amount from the last month. Um, and perhaps um, maybe as an offset, not, real, not in a good way, but it appears that the negative fund balances are going a little deeper into the negative. Not by 
much. But I'm seeing it I'm going a little bit more in, into the negative now. Uh, they are a little bit less. Um, and in the past couple months, we have really been monitoring cash in the bank. So you may see the aging report payable starting to increase as well. Because the cash isn't there to pay. Um, yes. On a good note, okay, we can you talked about the agent. Um, the our Cobb County Councilor, uh, Mr. Harrison, yeah, okay. has um, uh, worked very hard to deal with our seniors, and uh, it has come to our attention that the senior, the county, is putting in two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the agent, which is um, Calvin Brown, is part of the board that um, helps us become the uh, agent is getting. So I'm happy about that. You know, they're working with our uh, aging along with the other aging is coming <laughs> to fruition. Okay. And you know, as you know, um, the building is not standing empty. Um, the council approved um, the church to, to lease the place out uh, for approximately five years. It's a small amount coming in, but the building is not standing empty. Uh, the building is not being deteriorated. Um, the building is being um, rehab, whatever maintenance needs to be done to it the um, church is doing it. And they seem to be pretty well satisfied. I told them I'd come up there and check. Okay. All right. Good. So those are good notes. All right. Good. Thanks. Now it's you, sir. Uh, I forget. <laughs> no, I just... No, I'm saying you have one. I won't need that. I just need to, a basic question is, is well, actually a couple questions. On that house that they're tearing up that you guys are talking about, that house up on Terrace that is being torn up, they've taken out all the appliances and uh, have pretty much got it on the list to tear up the brand new houses. I, want, I didn't know if the folks who had all the money knew anything about it. <clears throat> and also, on the Noble Road dump, George... Michael Riley Sr. is the uh, supposed owner, but he's not really the owner. 
I just want to know if there was anything in that that said somebody did a background check on that Noble Road dump. Because I remember you guys, I believe in a past tape, you guys were all, all excited about us getting that dump. We're getting the recycling plan is what it was called. But it was not a recycling plan, it's just stacked of stuff. Nope. That, that $125,000 um, is property up Except that that one went to a, a guy who was, was a con artist. He conned the city and nobody did a background check on him. And now all that stuff is stacking up there. People are being sick and the city's going to have some problems doing, dealing with it. And the last thing is assault. I don't know if they're going to get, if they're going to have a mysterious deposit of salt, but down there I just went inside. There's nothing inside that little arena. So I'm just trying to figure out where this mysterious salt is hiding. And that's all I got for you guys. coming from the mayor, and I'm glad to see him sitting here to respect us as citizens of, uh, of this community to hear what we have to say. <clears throat> it would not have cost the city one cent, and the citizen exercised their constitutional rights to do a recall as the first amendment of the Constitution so states, and they followed that. <clears throat> That the right of the people, <clears throat> people to assemble and to petition the government for a regress of any grievances that they may have. And so, so they exercise their constitutional right. The person whom was, was, we're speaking of, the council in particular, the people was dissatisfied with his performance and which they have the right to do. <clears throat> And they recalled him. They were successful in that endeavor. I'm not speaking off the top of my head. I'm speaking now from what I heard and what was told to me by that person. He called me and told me if the people were successful in that endeavor, he would not fight. He would resign. He did not do that. The Constitution, I mean not the Constitution, but the Charter also gives him the right either to resign or what have you. It would not have cost the city one penny. He caused the city to pay, but they want to put it on the citizen. He caused the city this, uh, uh, the money that they now we have to pay. It cost us. And so if your word is no good, your bond is no good. So whoever shoot fit, way. Uh, I'm also puzzled. I don't know whether we have a law director. The mayor has a director. I mean, have a law director. But the law director is the law director for the city. Then when I heard <coughs> Council Thomas elucidate in reference to the law director not representing them, but she turned around and represent administration. So you can't have it both ways. She's there to represent this city, period. The council, the, the mayor, uh, the uh, administration, the, uh, uh, and the judicial system. That is the, the, the duty and responsibility of a law director. So I, I love her, like her. She's a peaceful person. She, but she, she caught up in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and council suddenly doesn't give up too much support by not saying if the, law, if, the, if the administration fire her for doing her job or what have you, she's afraid to do her job or go against him. Uh, thank you. Go against him uh, uh, 
uh, in reference to the council. She, so she's not representing us. She's supposed to represent the city, and she's supposed to walk the straight and narrow. She is not to get over here, over this group, or not over here. She must walk the straight and narrow. Whatever the law says, that's what she must apply to administration or to council. But she doesn't do that. She's afraid. I guess you're afraid of her job. Thank you. But I, I really wanted to say that because you're getting mixed messages here talking about the citizen cost. The citizen, we haven't cost anything. The citizen exercised their constitutional right, and he had the right to resolve. Mr. Alfrey. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like uh, Con former Councilman Mays took some of my thunder. As a community activist for over 30 years, uh, I love, I'm in love with my main man in Washington, D.C. It's called the First Amendment. And when this city, uh, my aunt and uncle moved into this city in 1969, we left Linville. Uh, uh, I began to get involved in the, this community uh, a little bit more sometimes, sometimes with the schools and sometimes with the city. Uh, and with a lot of stuff going on in the bigger city I was born in, Cleveland, Ohio, my favorite hometown to pick it when it comes to police and what have you, and 137 bullets. Uh, we, we uh, as I've said many times, it's East Cleveland City Council. I don't like my vote or uh, my, my money to be ignored. The services for, many, for, for months and months and months, we the citizens have not gotten because the city has problems with, with money. I'm in the car with people and they said, don't go where the hospital used to be. That's dangerous. We, we could disappear. Uh, we had a right to recall. Uh, I called uh, Ms. Stanberry and congratulated her because there was a whole lot of p different petitions out here. And there, many of them uh, were, were wrong. And if what, what I understand, if you don't get it right, downtown say it's wrong. She got it on the ballot. We, we, we did that. Uh, we had, uh, some people had, had problems with the, the council person. The bottom line is we the citizens, there's no kings and no queens. I saw a, a, a movie many years ago, uh, George Washington, about George Washington. This was many, many years ago. Uh, how true the movie was, I don't know. And uh, they had just got through, and of course black folks weren't even included. Uh, in the Constitution, he was a slave owner too. But they, according to the movie, they asked then George Washington whether he wanted to be king. And basically, I guess he said, wait a minute, didn't we just get through fighting that? So he didn't become king, he became president of the United States. We the citizens, uh, we might, people say, well, we might be ignored and we should be ignored. But some of us get tired of being ignored by this system that is racist, that is sexist, that is oppressive. And the other day, and I forget his name, I probably mispronounced it, the United States Supreme Court judge, in regards to affirmative action, in the terms of millions of people, said something that was racist as heck, in regards to black folks. Every ethnic group has their very bright people, their slower people, their average people, every ethnic group does. And I still haven't finished that book. I'm trying to finish reading, but I have about 50 pages uh, of Dr. Claude Anderson's book that was written in 1994. It's called Black Labor, White Wealth. And uh, the thing about it is, there's a, this, this country, this, this, this city, and this country got a long ways to go in regards to black folks and poor folks messing with black folks and poor folks' civil and human rights. Mr. McCoy. Uh, shortly after I came, started coming to these financial meetings, I realized that these financial meetings are a joke. Not you esteemed people, you all are not a joke, but these financial meetings are a joke. And they've been a joke from the beginning. You have a mayor that has been playing cat and mouse games, saying that he was going to come up with solutions, solutions, and solutions, when all the time 
he knew that the only solution that he had intended to come up with is to figure out a way to annex this city. Mm -hmm. And as long as he had that plan, no other plan matters. Mm -hmm. Finance don't matter. Trying to get the city off of uh, 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 uplifted doesn't matter. His only desire is to sell the city out. And as long as you have a mayor like that, this whole financial planning system, what y'all are going through, is a joke. It's a joke. He knows it very deeply that when these roles became in the condition they were, there was a great lawsuit that could have been filed against that company that paid Euclid. It didn't last, uh, it didn't last over five years. He could have got that uh, company to come in and redo Euclid because they messed it up. But his, listen, his job is to let the city go down, 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 down until everybody's tired and Cleveland gets it. That's his job. So again, listen, I keep it real. You all are not a joke. This planning commission is not a joke. But the whole system in which the mayor has came here and played with y'all is a joke. The whole system in which the mayor has came here and played with the residents of the city is a joke. God bless you. I love y'all. Thank you. Ms. Pinkstead. I sanction what Mr. McCoy said. Mr. O'Mays and I, most of the time we don't get along, but I agree with you. Mr. Struthers, I agree with him. I am a walker. I know every street in this city. Wow. Every street. And that house that was built on terrace, renovated, whatever you want to call it, has been vandalized. The appliances are gone, and you're talking about somebody buying that property? The house next door, the owner of that house told me they have been trying to steal things from her house. Who wants to buy a house around here? No one. It's sad. I've been here almost 55 years, and I, oh God, I wish I had left 25 years ago. End of statement. Okay, um, anything else for the good of the order? If not, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, Mayor moves, Ms. Thomas seconds, on a voice vote. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Have a good holiday, all. We'll see you in February.